that's bought and sold based off of the principles of supply and demand, and common stock is easier to buy and sell. However, if a company goes under or gets liquidated, this type of stock has very low priority. Now, with common stock, you do have voting rights in the company. This means that you do have some say in the direction of the company, and if you have enough of the shares, you can even be on the board of the company. Sometimes these types of stocks pay dividends, which is basically where you get paid out to hold the stock. And we're going to get into what a dividend is later on. Now, common stock actually does have higher upside when it comes to the potential gains. However, it's also more risky. So it has good upside, but bad downside. And common stock is, as the name suggests, the more common type of stock. When people talk about stocks, they are generally referring to common stock. Preferred stock, on the other hand, is usually sold at a higher amount. If the company goes under, this one has a high priority when it comes to liquidation. So you're more likely to get your money back. And you technically don't have voting rights with preferred stock. However, you may receive special voting privileges, which would be even better than the normal type of voting rights that you have with shares. The dividends tend to be fixed with preferred stock. However, there is limited upside when it comes to their returns. A way to think about preferred stock is almost like it's a bond, if you're familiar with that. Preferred stock is pretty much an instrument of debt, where you're pretty much going to get paid a fixed amount almost no matter what, even if the company goes under. So it does have limited upside when it comes to the returns, but it also has limited downside as well. Now let's go over different stock categories. We're going to go over large cap, mid cap, small cap, and micro cap stocks. So some people will argue about the exact numbers here, but these are just approximate. So anything that is $10 billion in market cap and above would be considered a large cap stock. These types of companies are considered to be stable, established companies, and they also tend to be less volatile. So a few examples of this would be, you know, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. Mid cap stocks tend to be around $2 billion and $10 billion in market cap. And these are up and comers. So these are companies that are probably headed towards being large cap, but they're not there yet. So a few examples of these would be Dunkin Donuts, American Eagle Outfitters, and Grubhub. Then you've got what are known as small cap stocks. Now these are going to be between $300 million and $2 billion companies. They're more affordable, but there can be greater volatility. Now that can be a good thing or a bad thing. You could invest in a small cap stock and it could go up significantly. An example of a small cap stock would be Bed Bath & Beyond, Office Depot, or AMC. Now interestingly enough, you can travel from a small cap to a large cap stock. And that's exactly what the company GameStop did over the last year. They started it off as a small cap stock and they ended the year as a large cap stock. And then you've got what are known as micro cap stocks. And these are less than $300 million companies. And these are incredibly risky. Um, a lot of the times, these would be what you would refer to as penny stocks. If you're familiar with the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, these are the types of companies that Jordan Belfort used to scam people. They basically manipulated the price of these companies in order to make a ridiculous amount of money from their investors. So because of the fact that these companies are so small, there's three different things you have to watch out for. First of all, they can be incredibly volatile. The prices of these stocks could double in a day, or they could go all the way down to 50%, 40%, 30% within a day as well. Because of the fact that the companies aren't worth as much, it's also easier to manipulate their prices either via the news or money if you have enough of it. Now that is technically illegal to manipulate the prices, but it still happens quite a bit. And people are constantly skirting that gray line of it being legal versus illegal. And then the third thing is there's low levels of liquidity, which basically means that even if you do have the stock and even if it did go up in price, it may be difficult for you to sell it. So with a lot of the large cap stocks, if you go to sell it, you can pretty much sell it immediately because it has a lot of liquidity. With small and micro cap stocks, sometimes it might not sell immediately. It could be more difficult. And in that time that it takes to sell it, maybe the price goes back down. So there are many different reasons that these types of stocks are risky and you have to be incredibly careful if you decide to invest in them. And I'm not even going to give you any examples of these because they would be companies that you've never heard of. But just know that be very careful with this. They are extremely susceptible to pump and dump schemes and all kinds of shenanigans. All right, moving along, there are other ways of categorizing stocks. And this is another way that you can do it, which is value stock, growth stock, as well as defensive. So value stocks tend to come from established companies with great fundamentals. These types of stocks tend to be less volatile. There tends to be pretty steady sales and profits. And the potential for your return on investment is probably going to be lower. So this is not the type of stock that is going to like, you know, double in three months or anything like that. Usually the PE ratio is going to be less than one. And we'll go over in a little bit what that means. A lot of the time, value stocks actually give dividends. And basically what you're looking for with this type of investing is you're looking for companies where the perceived value, aka what the stock is currently, is lower than what the actual value of the company is. So for instance, maybe a company had some type of scandal, but you believe that the company is going to fully recover from that scandal. But because of the negative news, the company's stock price went down a little bit. However, you believe that the company is going to fully recover and it's going to get back on track pretty soon. So you decide to invest in it. That would be an example of value investing. Now, interestingly enough, especially through the pandemic, value stocks and value investing have really changed quite a bit because of the fact that they relied on foot traffic ended up losing a lot of their value. But with that being said, one example of a value stock, in my opinion, would be SoFi. Some more traditional examples of value stocks might include Costco or Walmart. Now, investing in growth stocks, for instance, also known as growth investing, on the other hand, is where you try to find companies that have tremendous upside. Now, these companies do tend to be more volatile. And these types of companies are usually scalable. So you see a lot of growth stocks in the technology industry, for instance, because technology related companies tend to be scalable. There also usually is a high P to E ratio, and that's price to earnings. We're going to go over that here in a bit. And they rarely pay dividends. A very obvious example of this one would be Tesla. Tesla went up about 10x or 1000% in a one year period. And so that is an example in recent history of something that would be considered a growth stock. Another example of a type of investing is defensive investing or defensive stocks. And these are stocks that are very stable and they're usually not cyclical. Now, again, this one kind of got turned on its head a little bit during the pandemic. There were many examples of defensive stocks that are usually considered to be consumer staples that suffered a lot during the pandemic. But with that being said, these tend to be very slow and steady. They tend to have high paying dividends. There's lower profit potential, but there's also lower risk. And they tend to be consumer staples as well. Although in many cases, defensive stocks can also be value stocks. So one example of that would be Walmart. Now, keep in mind, guys, these are not necessarily mutually exclusive. Uh, you could have a stock that's potentially 
essentially all three of these things at once. You also could have a stock that starts off as a growth stock, and then later on, maybe five years later, it turns into a value stock. Now, if you do buy a stock, you would be known as a shareholder. And because of this, you would get to have some voting rights in a company and have a limited control of the direction that that company goes. The more stock you own, the more control you have. If you own enough stock, you can even get on the board of the company. Now, I do want to tell the difference between stakeholders and shareholders. Shareholders are interested in the return on investment of a stock. And usually this is in the short term. So if somebody invests in a company, you know, they invested in the stock, they want to see that stock go up. Whereas stakeholders tend to be more invested in the long-term success of a company. Now, we've seen a strategy that's been especially popular in the last few decades where companies will actually go billions of dollars in debt in some cases in order to take a certain amount of the market share of whatever market they're trying to break into. This was a strategy that Amazon used for many years. They weren't making money. It's a strategy that you see Uber using right now. And sometimes this can be a good strategy. Sometimes if you take enough of the market share, this can pay off in the long run. However, in the short term, it might make your stock not as valuable. Now, sometimes those who are shareholders might make decisions that is good for the company in the short term. You know, for instance, they might lay a bunch of people off or they might start using cheap components instead of expensive ones. And that can end up making the company more money in the short term. 